Um, Hello, class. Hello. Hi, guys. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, Miss. Hi. Hi, guys. Good to see you. How are you today? Not too bad. You look different, too. Do I? Why do I look different? And you have. Oh, yeah. Well, today I let my hair down. <laughs> That's why. Um, you know, I. I the weather the salon? No, no, no. I just went, I just let my hair, I just, you know, let my hair down. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yes. This is my hair, my natural hair. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all right, guys. Welcome. Welcome to today's class. How are you today? Not, not good, bad. How are you guys doing? Well, Sway, how are you doing? Hello, Miss. Well, I'm... in my case, I I have a lot of work in the past days, but I by today I'm here. <laughs> and uh... I have the and I went to the hospital to uh, put me the second doses of the COVID-19. Oh no. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling? Oh fine. I'm very fine. Thank you. Good, good. Any problem? Which which vaccine did you get? Sorry? Which vaccine did you get? Any any symptom? No, which vaccine did you get? I can hear you very well, me uh, teacher. I uh the, the no, summer. vaccine. Which vaccine did you get? Vaccine, vacuna. I I can hear you. Uso. Sorry. Uh, what kind of vac uh, the vacuna? La AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. AstraZeneca. Okay. Okay. Um, the good thing about that one is that the first time you get all these symptoms, the second time you don't yeah. get symptoms. Many. But I don't have any symptoms with the first one. No? Oh, that's no, it. No, no, oh, okay. no, no. Okay. I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because I did. I did. I, mm -hmm. I had a lot of symptoms. Basically, like my, I, I had a, like a very, a very serious cough. Yeah. I'm in the first. But in the second one, um, I really didn't feel very much. So, the, so that was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, Josue, how are you doing? Mm, a little busy. I work, in, I work today. Now I am in the office. Yeah, I can see that. When, yeah. when, is, when, when is your day off going to be? Um, it's uh, afternoon job. Chief is I, I start to work at Two o'clock, and I finish my um, my chip at ten or eleven p.m. So at eleven tonight or eleven in the morning? No, no, no eleven p.m. tonight. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Um, just give me a second. Okay, so that's going to be nice. That's going to be. Um, very, very um, nice to go home and and just uh, relax a bit. Yeah, but now I I have a problem with uh, the UPS and I am using the two uh, emergency generator. Oh, what well, what's the problem? Mm, we had a problem uh, Sunday with 
Uh, I don't remember how to say it in on the cell for raining. Oh, okay, okay, let's see. Well, okay, well, um, the, the, well, so tomorrow you're gonna be off. Are you gonna do anything nice and uh, interesting tomorrow? Or are you just going to no, relax? No, to relax tomorrow I have uh, uh, three days. Uh, I think I, I need to have uh, some homework of the university. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're you're also studying at the university, right? Yeah. What is it that you're studying? Um, engineering, industrial. Industrial engineering. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, that's the area that you're 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 in right now, right? So. Yeah. So it's it's a little easier for you. Good. Good. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Good. Excellent. All right. Um, okay, well, I see many more people are connecting. Uh, that's great. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take the attendance so that we, uh, we can um, get that over with. Um, that's weird. The, the, the girl that always starts our attendance is not here. <laughs> She's always here. I mean, where is she? Oh no, I guess she, maybe she had problems connecting. Okay, so here we go. Ana Claudia. It's, guess, oh, there she is. Aha. Uh -huh. Ana Claudia. Hi, teacher, present. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, that's weird. She, she's always here. Okay. Hi, thank you. Okay, um, let's see, we have Andres. Present, present, present. Right. Welcome. Um, Claudia. Present. All right. Welcome, Claudia. And Edgar. Present teacher. All right. Present. Welcome, Edgar. What about Urban? Present teacher. Present. All right. Welcome, Urban. And um, Heidi. Present teacher. All right, excellent. Um, and uh, Irene. Irene. No, Irene's not here. Okay. All right. Um, Ivan. Is Ivan here? Ivan is not here. Okay, what about Jose? Jose Montes? Okay, and Jose Ayala? Okay, and Josue? I'm here, teacher. All right. Um, and Juan Francisco? Juan Francisco. Okay, and what about Jerry? Present teacher. All right, welcome Jerry. Thank you. And what about Luis? Present teacher. Okay, welcome Luis and Natalia. Present teacher. Okay. Welcome. And Ronald. Present teacher. All right. Welcome, Ronald. Thank you. And Wendy. Present. Okay. Um, welcome, Wendy. And Warner. Present teacher. Welcome, Warner. What about Yvonne? Yvonne? Yvonne, are you there? No? Okay. All right. So I'm just going to, uh, again, go over the list of the people that I didn't hear, just to make sure that um, I didn't miss anybody. Um, so I didn't hear Irene, Ivan. Present teacher, present. Oh, there she is. Okay. Welcome, Irene. Thank you. 
Okay, what about Jose Montes? Oh, Jose Ayala? Um, uh, Ivan? Um, I also didn't hear, oh, well, no, um, let me see. I didn't hear Ivon either. Is Yvonne here? No? Present teacher. Oh, okay. Welcome, Yvonne. All right, perfect. Thank you. So then I have everybody. Okay, good, good, good. Well, not everybody, but the majority of you guys. Excellent. Okay, so guys, um, what we're going to do today, um, uh, we are what going to... Think? Uh, go over the vocabulary that we've seen in the past. That's we're gonna first thing we're gonna be doing. Okay, so tell me if you can see my PowerPoint. Not yet, teacher. How about now? Okay, now I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so we're going to, um, we're, we're gonna continue talking about the reduced separate clauses of time. Um, and well, your teacher is Jessica Guerrero, the, it's intermediate two, it's class number four, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be going over this vocabulary here, okay? Um, this is something I asked you guys to do for homework. Um, then I say remember because this is actually vocabulary that we've seen in the past. This is not new vocabulary. This is not actually new vocabulary from the past, okay? So um, what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna be doing this part right here which is um, telling me the order of these um, steps, okay? So I would like you guys to help me out with this so that we can complete it. What is the first um, step? Idea generation. Can you guys see my, 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 um... hold on. Yes. It's in the upper side. Okay. On the right side. So you can see it, right? Yes, teacher. Yeah, teacher. Yes. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for confirming. All right. So um, I would like you guys to tell me what's the first step? Idea Ana Claudia generation. Said, uh, idea generation. Idea generation. Mm -hmm. Then I guess that we can use also test marketing. Um, <clears throat> no, I think- Based on the presentation you sent. <laughs> they are all- Smart, or, or we have to mark the one to eight. One to eight, exactly. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, teacher, because I'm like, that's why I don't idea, understand. Idea <laughs> screening is the number two. Very good idea screening. This is the part where you um, you rule out any uh, any ideas that wouldn't make that wouldn't work. Uh, when you go, okay, this doesn't work because of this. So you start like um, taking out different ideas, right? So in the idea generations, like a multiple ideas and then idea screening, you start um, thinking about the, um, the do's and the don'ts. And then you say, oh, you know, the, the pros and the cons. And you say, okay, no, this one doesn't work. This one does, right? Okay. okay. And then what do you do? What's number three? Concept development and testing. Concept development and testing. Which one? Concept, Concept development, development, and development and testing. Good, right here. So this is basically uh, where you go ahead and you 
um, get information from potent, like uh, from other people to see <clears throat> say, um, if they would be interested in that concept, right? If they would be interested in that product. Um, so you see, you know, if it's if it is a possibility or not, right? If people um, like basically the theory, right? So it's not looking at the product yet. They're just looking at the theory. Would that would they be interested in it or not? Okay. Number three. Or business anal analysis. Everybody agrees. Yeah, teacher, business analysis. Teacher, I think I think the best marketing. Business analysis. What, what do you do in the business analysis? Who can explain to me? What do you do in the business analysis? The business case of the product. Oh, he appears. Who? You. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry. I was busy working. Marta, Marta. I don't want that. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yes, in the business analysis, after you have seen, okay, um, this is what the people want, right? This is what um, the market says. Um, they, they like the idea, they like the product, um, they like, um, you know, this, this part of, product can work. Then they go and they do the business analysis. So in other words, they say, okay, now that we know what people want, let's start thinking about what it would cost us to do it, to um, make this product. Um, so they look at the cost, they look at, um, at you know, what, what they would need to make it. They look at the final price. So how, would, would it be able to, um, would you be able to sell it for a certain amount of money, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, that's the business analysis. Does that make sense? Yes, teacher. Yep. Ah, and they also look at the competitors too, right? Okay, so any any competitors, um, so that way they can figure out what the price is gonna be too, right? Because looking at the competitors gives you an idea of what you can sell the product for, right? Okay, then after that, what comes after that? As marketing. Development. Oh, develop. Okay, good. Product development. This is when, okay, so after you have created this wonderful product, sorry, after you have created the wonderful um, Idea. Uh, product on paper, now we're going to create the prototype, the actual prototype, so that we can um, pass from the, we, we can pass from the paper to the actual physical product. Okay. Does that make sure. sense? Uh, but uh, what about if you don't taste the marketing and you develop a product, you will have all product on your uh, storage? No, this is just creating the prototype. We're not creating mass production. This is not mass production. This is like, okay, so we've done the, the business analysis. We can make this product for this amount of money. This is how we're going to make it. Okay, now, now let's make it. Let's make a prototype. So they create okay. new products of these prototypes. Okay, okay so I'm gonna scale. I guess that it has to be changed. Develop a prototype has to be, right? Not develop the product because the product is all the product. No, you uh, the product development, like uh, it means the development of the product. That's what it means. Yes, the okay. prototype. Yeah, so the prototype. We're not talking about mass production. Again, I'll repeat. It's not like we're going to make thousands. It's a model. It's, it's a, a model. It's model. like a sample. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a model. Maybe they will make, I don't know, 10, 15, 20. I don't know, something like that, right? A small amount, okay? So not, this okay. is not really, and this part is not really for sale, okay? That's mm -hmm. not important. The, the product development is not for sale. It's just to see what the product is going to look like. We're gonna develop the product. 
Okay. Okay. So, so after that, it's going to be test marketing. So, okay. Very good. Now we're going to go to the test marketing. Exactly. Why? Because now that we have created this product, this beautiful product, we're going to see does it work? Do people like it? Um, do you know, do, do people think that this, this is something that they would buy, you know, now that they've seen the product itself and they've tried it, they've looked at the quality, they looked at the price, they've looked at, um, the utility of the product, et cetera, et cetera. And now they're going to tell you, okay, yes, I would buy this or no, I don't really think this is good. You know, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. Okay, does that make sense? Sure. Yes. Market, yes. The test marketing is like uh, investigation in the car. Is it, no. Is it similar? No, that's ah, research. Yes. That's it's not different. that's research marketing. Is that? That's research oh. marketing, not ah. test marketing. not test. Okay. The test is when you do the, the, the create the product on yeah when you launch the product. Exactly. We're testing the product. That's what it is. That's why it's called test marketing because we're testing the product. It's so different like the investigation in the market. Right. That would be more like um feedback. feedback. That would be like the idea screening. No, no, sorry, no, no, sorry. Uh the con the concept development and testing. That, that that's where it would go right so the the investigation de mercado that's in number three right that's where you ah, okay okay people okay. like what people this want is, okay, okay this is my problem because i think that the the test marketing is like an investigation de mercado i can't do that that's my problem and this no. marketing is after that right the, the after that there, what we're doing is we're testing the product. Okay. No, we're, we're, we're testing the marketing. We're not, we're not researching it. It's, it's something very different. There's, there's a difference between testing and researching. Okay. Researching is before it's like making an investigation. Testing is after we've done after. the investigation, after. what do you think? Okay. The final product. Okay. It's like, let's say uh, research is like, imagine I tell you, okay, I'm going to, we're going to have a test. First, we're, I want you to tell me, what do you know about the present perfect, right? Um, have you ever heard of it? What do you use? That's kind of like the research. I find out, what do you know about it, right? Then I, I, then I give it to you, and now I'm going to test you on it, right? So I can't test you, or better said, I, I, I can't, yeah, I can't um, test you before I do a research to find out what's going on. What, what do you know? What do you do, don't know? And then I give you the, the information. Does that make sense? Irvin? Okay, this, I understand. Okay, okay good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so in that case, let's continue. Um, all right, so now that we've done the test marketing, what we got, what do we got to do next? Launch. Launch. What do we do next? I guess that is launch, launch. because after launch. the launch, you have to commercialize a uh, commercialization the product. Number seven is commercialization. Number seven is commercialization. Commerce, I, that is the way. Commercial, come on. <laughs> commercialization. 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 Yes, commercialization. Okay. This is not selling, it's uh, look for the price and stuff like that, right? Yeah, this is like, okay, yeah, this is like, I'm going to promote it. I'm going to... Um, Making the plan how to sell it, how to... Yeah, that's it, exactly. Uh, you're you're making the problem. Okay, so now we've tested the market. We know uh, what we need to improve, 
what people like about the product, what people don't like about a product. And if it's good enough, we're going to change whatever people didn't like about it. And now it's time, it's ready, right? Okay, mm -hmm. it's now ready. So now- Commercialize. Uh, just to know, teacher, commercialization is like uh, when you show your product. Right, exactly. Um, but looking for the best ways for distribution, price, strategies for marketing. Right. I understand. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where you're going to be selling it, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, where are you going to sell your product? Is it going to be sold online? Are you going to use a certain store that is going to, where they're going to get it, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. Does that make sense? That's true. Yes. Okay. And then you launch. Of course, and then we launch it, right? We launch the product, the final product. We send it to the place where it's going to be, um, where it's going to be distributed. But that doesn't. That's not all. That's not all that is involved in in launching, right? Um, oh, and by the way, the in the conversation commercialization that's where you do like the mass production okay then that in that moment right there okay and um because you have to have it ready right and then you launch it now launching also involves not just staying static and say okay here's the product okay and then that's it no we have to study what happens with the product when you finally launch it to the market what happens how do people respond to it um, was it a success? Was it not a success? And that will help us for future products because um, if we are able to identify what went well and what went wrong in that um, launching, then you are able to uh, make a better product next time. Does that make sense? That's right. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about that? Uh, just to know, teacher, we can use commercialize. Sorry? We can use a commercialize. The word, or do you mean? Or? Yeah, uh, what are you referring to? Um, just to commercializar. As a verb? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you could. It's not very, it's not very common, but yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we have those uh, four words. I'm going to going. I'm going to get you guys to work in groups, small groups, and you're going to um, and you're going to discuss what uh, the definition of each word is. What did you find? And see if you have the same definition, different definitions, um, if you understand the concept or not. Okay. So let's create the groups right now. Um, just give me a moment. Uh, there are. 18 of you, I will get you guys to work in groups of three. So we'll have exactly six students each. Wow, I'm so proud of you guys. We're pretty much everybody is connected. Yay. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to give you, hmm, I would say in eight minutes, it shouldn't take you very long, okay? So I'm gonna give you eight minutes to discuss those four words, okay? Each one of you is going to give your own definitions that you, you found out, okay? So here we go, let's open the rooms.
Teacher, no me parece para ir a la sala. Just a moment. Was the, I was Ufa so strident. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, it's, it, that was my fault. I was saying hello to Rona. Sorry, Rona. What are you doing? <laughs> Martians. <laughs> you're joking. Sorry. It's because Ivan is here. I'm so sorry. Okay. Teacher, you are playing with us. Right? I live now for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, let me try that again. Oh. But I, I, I was going, yeah, I... I no, let's let's try this again. Sorry about that. You are you are testing. You are testing. Yes, yes, I'm testing the market. <laughs> okay, here we go. I see. I see. Yeah, les prometo que ya no toco nada. Number five. Okay. We have prototype, target audience, manufacturing, and position positioning. I I'm not sure about the pronunciation of the last word. Okay. Uh, have prototipo, público objetivo, positioning, y posicionamiento. Uh -huh. Eso lo positioning. <laughs> okay, Andres, uh, for you, what is a prototype? Prototype in English or Spanish? In English. It's like a. Como the first, the first uh, product that the company has to to make proof. ¿Cómo sería prueba en, en, en inglés, teacher? ¿Prueba? Sí. Um, like ¿Una prueba uh -huh. o uh, um, como pro, eh, el prueba? Como, digamos, me estoy refiriendo a, por ejemplo, si fabrican un, un vehículo, por ejemplo, y la compañía quiere hacer prueba. La versión de prueba. Test, no, test. test. To test uh -huh. something. Okay. To okay. test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm referring about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right for me. Is um, it's like the materialization of the idea. Uh, because um, you have to make a test uh to see if your product uh needs to improve um in some areas uh, you have to look uh about the presentation and the functionality of the of the product right and you can see what areas can you improve and what about you edgar Okay, okay, there. What, do, what do you think uh, or what is the definition of prototype for you? Uh, pro prototype? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes. The product prototype, the, the model, um, uh, the new, the new, uh, the new game, the new game, 
the new game. Uh, if we finish our customers, yes. Uh, it's like market segment. Yes, it's like market segment. Okay, market segment. Is it man manufacturing? It's a uh, factory where you have a uh, product in line. After the, to, after the, to have a, a, a product in prototype, manufacturing, fabrication, fabrication of the mini. Yeah, in the definition, I said uh, making of article on large scales using machine yes. in its Perfect. production. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And the, oh, I don't have to pronounce. Position. Yeah. Yeah. I see they say position. This uh, is the last one. Position. Okay. I have a question because positioning in this in marketing is positionamiento in market. I don't know, I am, I am not sure, okay. I think that is uh, the meeting because uh, it is put or arrange um, someone or something in a particular place or way. I think it's uh, production. Yeah. of your products. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's uh, when you make yeah. a big quantity. Manufacturing. Like manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mano is the hand and factory is the work that made the factory. Yes. When you develop and create the product can be said. Correct. And then and manufacturing and positioning. Positioning is the com commercialize, commercial, uh -huh, commercialize, or commercial commercialization. I guess that the teacher says. Teacher, can you help me with the pronunciation of that word? Hello. Hello, teacher. Yes, which word? Okay, the commercialization is right. That is correct. Okay, perfect. Okay, so in that point, the positioning is mm -hmm. commercialization. Only create like some commercial and show the product with the audience or with the other people that want that maybe can be the the target for the product are you guys that, i guess that, yeah. yes teacher Okay, in that case, um, I'll see you guys in the main room in a moment. Okay. Okay. See you then. It's revealed now. We're missing that introduce. <laughs> that introduce. Yes, this is very, very, very first time in this mall. <laughs> yes, exactly. The first ones of many <laughs> in the next coming days. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Okay, so everybody was able to finish, right? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, great. All right, so let's, let's um, share. Okay, so tell me, what is a prototype? Who wants to give me a definition for a prototype? It's, a, it's a, like a preliminary model of something. Good. Okay, good. Another yes. definition? An, or, an original model on which something is patterned. Very good. Okay, good. I'm asking for different definitions because um, obviously, I mean, yeah, you're going to find many different definitions for the same word. So that's why, not because it's incorrect, it's just that I want to have a different opinions. Okay. So, any, any more, any other um, definitions for, for prototype? A prototype is a basic structural process to show you uh, really superficial, how do you say superficial? Superficial? Superficial, a superficial process. Okay, all right, good, good. Okay, next, target audience. Who wants to give me a definition for a target audience? Refers to specific group of consumers most likely to want your product or service. Okay, very good, very good. Another one? Come on guys, don't be afraid. Uh, uh... Target audience is the demographic of people most likely to be interested in a company's product or service. Mm -hmm. Good, excellent. All right. Right. Another definition? Uh, mark a segment if you want to reach. Target audience. Sorry, again? Target audience and mark market segment that you want to read. Okay. Okay, sure. Very good. Okay, manufacturing. Sure, but in fact, what is the meaning of the target audience audience? Uh target audience is um who who is the objective of your uh, product. So who do you want to buy? Who who do you think the, the product, product is going to be good for, right? So like, um, so who is going to be your consumer, in other words? Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, but, but th that's like the focus, right? Of your, you, to give you an example, a target audience could be like, um, you know, uh, children. Okay, your target audience is children, for example, uh, or your target audience can be uh, mothers, right? Or your target audience can be uh, the businessman, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, all right, manufacturing. It's uh, to like make articles the... on a large scale using machinery is industrial production. Okay. Very that is good. what I found too. You too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yes. <laughs> okay. Google search. Mr. Yeah. Google. <laughs> Mr. Google said that. San <laughs> Google. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Or mighty Pope Moon. Okay. Another one? It's elaboration of the product. Okay. Okay. Anything else? The making of articles on a large scale using 
machinery, industrial production. Industrial production. Okay. All right. Very uh, good. It, the, bueno, when you say uh, in market, uh, the market position is, refers to the ability to influence the consumer, the perception of the consumers. Right now, it's just the manufacturing. No, the positioning. Uh, okay, okay. So you, you're giving us the definition for the positioning. Yeah. Okay, okay, sure. We can go for that one now. Okay. Another definition for positioning? Mm -hmm. Come on, guys, positioning. What do you guys got for that? Uh, is to promote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, arrange some, someone or something in a particular place. A particular way that is I found, but it's mostly to promote. Okay, okay, good. Anything else? Refers to the process of establishing the image or identity of a brand or product so that customers perceive it in a certain way. Very good, yeah. Excellent. I like that definition. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent, guys. So we understand this vocabulary for everybody. So everybody understands this vocabulary and we understand this vocabulary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, in that case, guys, we're gonna move on to the next part, which is not vocabulary, but grammar here. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at a little bit about grammar. And I really want you guys to pay attention to this because um, it looks complicated, but it really isn't, okay? But you just have to pay attention to it, okay? So, um, I need a volunteer to help me read this first part. Who can help me this first part here? Okay, go for it. Adverb clauses introduced by before, after, since, and while can be reduced to modify adverb phrases. Okay, good. So an adverb clause, what is an adverb clause? Let's start with that. What is an adverb clause? What is it? Who knows? Who can tell? Me? What is an adverb clause? Because we need to understand adverb clause before we, we move on, right? Otherwise we can't understand how to reduce an adverb clause if we don't know what an adverb clause is to begin with. Any ideas? No? Okay. All right. It, adverb clauses is something very, very simple. It's a clause or part of a sentence that tells us when, it, well, well, no, it doesn't necessarily tell us when. It, tell, it gives us information, more information about the action. Okay. 
So it's a, it's a part of a sentence that gives us information about the action that's happening in the, in the main clause, okay? So to give you an example, if in the main clause I say, I broke my arm, I broke my arm, okay? Um, and I'm gonna write it down here so that you guys can see this and it's easier for you guys to um, I have a, like an idea of what, what I'm talking about. If I say to you, I broke my arm. Okay, that is a main clause, right? Because this is a complete idea. It doesn't need any information, any additional information to be complete, right? This is a complete idea. And therefore, it's uh, in what we call an independent clause. So it doesn't need more information to complete it. Does that make sense? It's like an affirmation, right? Yeah, but yeah. Um, but basically, a, a, a main clause is simply that it has a complete idea. You don't need something else to complete it. It's it's complete by itself. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, teacher. Yeah. And and how yeah. do you know that the idea is complete? Usually because we have a subject and a verb, okay. right? And it makes sense, right? I, I I there's no other questions left behind. It kind of is complete. That's why we call it a main clause, okay? Now, in my main clause, what is my action? In this clause here, what's main, what's the action? Broke. 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 Right, broke, exactly. Oops make this into red okay. all right good now so this idea is complete right this idea is complete but if i add another idea here and i say uh, when i was a child is that idea complete? No. Why not? No. Because you do not say there any action in that. Only you it's can complete say because that when you when you when you were a child, only that you don't say anything. More. Okay. Remember what I told you. How can you identify if it's complete? Well, three things. It has a subject, it has a verb, uh -huh. and there is oh, yes, there. Oh, yes, there And there is what? Hold on. Okay, so I'll repeat. How do you know if it's a it's a complete idea? One, it has a subject. Two, it has a verb. And three, there's no questions pending like there's there's no questions uh, that I have left like say aha uh -huh, what so if I say to you when I was a child is there a subject yes yes, yes. what's the subject I. 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 is there is there a verb was 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 yes, yes. yes there is right now does is it complete uh, or do I have questions left no. no. Is there any question? You I just said I yeah. was a child, yes. But if you add when, no. If I say when I was a child, is there anything question left there? Like, yeah, after that, when you were a child, uh, what? What happened? Uh -huh, what happened? Exactly. Uh, I don't know. Uh -huh, what? What? Uh, when you were a child, what happened? No. So there are questions left. There are questions left. It's not complete then. Does that make sense for you? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so uh, teacher, teacher. So, 
I, I don't know if you understand. Uh, for example, this sentence, since I was a shy, I like the dogs. This is a complete sentence. Since I was a child, I like the dogs. Is there a specific place where you're looking at or you just made up that sentence? No, it's an it's like example of that. Oh, okay, that okay, sentence. all right. Okay, so when I can you repeat the 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 sentence? Since I was a shy, I liked the dogs. Okay, since I was a child, I've liked dogs. I've liked dogs. Okay, sure, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now, the what I'm saying here, though, I I really need you guys to understand this. These are two clauses. Okay, these are two clauses. One is I broke my arm. The other one is uh, when I was a child. These two clauses, however, one is complete and therefore it's the main clause or the independent clause because we don't need no other information. And the other one is a dependent clause mm -hmm. because it depends on some more information to complete the idea. So my question is, which of these two is um, a depend, sorry, an independent clause? This one or this one? I broke my arms. The first I broke one. my arm. The first one is independent. It doesn't need more information to complete the idea. Okay? Mm -hmm. The second one is what we call a dependent clause. Why? Because we depend on this clause to complete the idea, okay? I can't just simply say when I was a child, okay? That would be like, um, like you say in Spanish, cuando yo era una niña. So if you say cuando yo era una niña, you're like gonna go, aha, uh -huh, que paso? Cuando yo era una niña, que, que, right? So there is, it's not complete. So what I need to do is I need to have another part to complete the idea. So when, so what I can do is now I can put these things together and say, and say, I broke my arm when I was a child. And now the dependent clause that needs information to, to, to answer is now complete by putting this information. I broke my arm. So now it makes sense. I broke my arm when I was a child. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Okay, so two clauses one is complete, one isn't, okay? And the one that isn't complete needs the, the first one to complete it. Now, um, something that I want you guys to also know is this. I can, I can switch around the, um, the order. So I could say this too, right? When I was a child, I broke my arm. It's gonna be the same thing, okay? So I could, I could put it here or I can put it here. It really doesn't matter. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Guys, are, does that make sense or are you confused? Teacher, is, is it necessary to use a comma or something like that when we use a... Yes, exactly. Yes, good observation. But when it's in the middle or the beginning of the sentence? Um, we use, okay, so over here, we're not going to put, we're, we're not going to. Uh, I remember a rule, I'm sorry, just yes. mention one time. Yes. When we have subject in two sentences, we need to separate them. Um, no. No. In this case, there is a connector. 
It's what we call like a connector, okay? And the connector is? When. When, exactly. So this is a connector and because the connector is in the middle, we don't need a comma. But we would need a comma if this part here was over here. If it said, when I was a child, uh, I broke my arm, then we would need a comma uh -huh. right there because the connector when is at the beginning. It's not connecting. Okay. Okay. Yes, so said, good to so, know. Got it. So now it's, it's clear. You guys understand what an, ad, an adverb clause is, right? Which part, of the, which part of the sentence is an adverb clause? It's the dependent clause. The dependent clause is the adverb clause. Now, why do we call it an adverb clause? The reason is because, oops, sorry. The reason is because this, um, hold on, give me a moment. Because this information here, when I was a child, what it's doing is, it's giving me more information about this about this um, this this activity here of breaking my arm. Okay. Your arrow is okay, teacher. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm just um, I'm a little. Um, perfectionist, if you guys noticed a little bit. Yes, but thank you. Okay, so anyway, um, so yeah, this, this information here is giving me information about breaking, okay? Breaking the arm, about that action of breaking. What is it giving me information about? It's giving me information about the, when, when it happened, okay? So I broke my arm. When did it happen? When I was a child, ¿qué pasó con lo demás? Se me borra la flecha. Se me borra. Ahí está. Ok. All right. Ah, pues se va a tener que rehacer la, la flechita. Va, me salió más bonito esta vez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ok. All right. So, anyways. Um, so, this, this part here, this is giving me more information about when I broke my, my arm. Ok. That's why it's called a uh, adverb clause because adverbs what do adverbs do adverbs give information about verbs or other adverbs okay in other clause of time is then then no no the clause of time is all the sentence right the the the, the adverb depending clause, the adverb clause is the whole thing when I was a child. The depending, the depending one. Yeah, the depending, depending clause one. is clause, uh -huh. depending clause, which is also the adverb clause, is when I was a child. So far, so good. So the adverb clause is when I was a child, as you said. Right. The the entire sentence. When I was a child. Right. The complete one is I broke my arm because that is a complete action, right? right. This is this is called the independent clause. Independent, that is the word independent okay. clause. So this is this is um hold on. Independent. Okay. Close. Okay, so this is an independent clause yes and this is the like that just to know teacher this is a adverb clause of time right right i'm just uh, there are many types of adverb clauses but right now i'm we're going to be we're going to be concentrating on adverb clauses of time there are adverb time there are adverb clauses of Reason, the adverb clauses of okay, must say reason, they do foundation. No, adverb Ladies. clauses, the question and affirmation. No, 
No, no, just no, adverb, adverb clauses. clauses. Uh, we're just talking about adverb clauses. Adverb clauses are clauses that give my information about my main, my main action. Okay? I guess maybe there is a confusion teacher that some of our classmates are thinking that the adverb clause of time is just the word after since when and it's not just a word no, it's the it, whole sentence a clause a clause includes um it's part of a sentence and it includes mm -hmm. a subject and a verb yeah a verb exactly okay that's a clause mm -hmm. okay otherwise it's a phrase okay if mm -hmm. it's not if it's not if it doesn't include those two things it's a phrase but this is a clause and the clause includes at least the subject and the verb okay and it feels like it's for what time is it, guys? What nine. Does, nine. Is six nine. past the nine. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop for a moment here, but uh, when I stop, this thing is going to disappear. So I just want to make sure you guys understand this. Okay, so this is the um, independent clause. Exactly. I'll write it down. This is the independent or main clause, okay? Right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And this part right here is the dependent, okay, uh, clause, which happens to be also our adverb clause because it's given me information about my main verb. Okay? Mm -hmm. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Does that make Got sense it. for everybody? Yes. Alguien no entiende? That's okay, I can explain. That's what I'm here for. Teacher, I confused. Maybe I don't know, I don't uh, understand you, but for me, when is the only when is the adverb clause? No, because a clause includes a subject and a verb. Yeah, the clause is, yeah, a, is but, part of the verb. Yeah, be, but um, in my mind, is uh, the shock because uh, I um i learned this this form the when uh, is only albert clause because it's the clause is the la clausula uh, and but you say the the complement or in i don't know if it's correct the complement the the when, That's I when is a, a preposition shower. right teacher Actually, the technical word for the word when is what we call subordinate. What do you, yeah, how do you say? Is the time. It's a subordinate. 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 A subordinate uh -huh. is a, a connector. Ah, okay. It's a connector. Yes, this, uh, uh, for example, uh, the close the time for me is after us, when, uh, yeah, that's the connector. Um, just before, yeah, but, well, well yeah, that's just the, the word, together. Wendy, just the word, yeah, is only not the clause. Uh, just that little word is not the clause of time. Exactly. The clause of time is that word as used as a connector, but also has a subject and also has a mm -hmm. verb. Right. It's so part, there two the connector sentences. is part of the 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 clause the connector is part of the clause but it's not just the clause yeah okay. uh, i don't know is is in my for i i, I explain why i maybe i don't understand you uh all okay. the, but the, the, that, but do you understand now wendy do you understand that when um, is a connector that begins my uh, my clause. 
I, I learned in different in Spanish and in English too, <laughs> because in Spanish is similar that my other, uh, uh, como mi respuesta anterior, no? Okay, um, but I right, okay. But, well, I, 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 I practice right now in this form. Yeah, okay. Because it's uh, different. Right. Uh, remember, I, I, there's there are some things in Spanish and English that are similar, but some things in, in Spanish and English that are very different. So right now- Yeah, but in, in, in English too is uh, this form, when only is a uh, adverb clause. No, when is a connector. Teacher, I guess the confusion, the confusion okay. is right there because we are not using uh, an adverb Close like before, after, since, and while, and while in this example, we're using uh, when. Yeah, but we can use, I mean, I'm just using when, but you can use many others, right? There's like, we can use connectors like after, before, um, while, okay? Except, you know, so there are, other connectors. I'm just using this one because I've only used one sentence. Okay. I so, I, so I, those are connectors before, after, since, and while. Yeah. Uh, and we some, can add some, some connectors. There, there are more, right? But when we're talking about um, connectors for time, we're going to be using after, before, while, when. Um, as soon as, okay, once, okay, so there are a few. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, for me, it makes sense. All right, okay, so uh, if you guys want, um, you guys can go ahead and um, investigate a little bit more about clauses, uh, if, it, if it helps you out a little bit more. Um, so that you guys can understand it better. But right now we're gonna move on because um, es, o sea, esto ni siquiera es el tema. El tema, esto es solo la introducción al tema. Okay, entonces ahorita I need to continue My to be able to understand this, okay? Now, okay, so now that we understand what is an independent clause and what is a dependent clause, okay? So all of this is the, dependent clause, sorry, independent clause, and the, all of this is the dependent clause, which we decided was also an adverb clause because it's giving me information about the action, break. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, but now that we understand that, I, I want you to look at the sentences and- The attendance teacher. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's stop that. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Present. Ah, no, no, dicho. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Claudia. Present, teacher. All right, Andres. Present, teacher. All right, Claudia. Present. All right, uh, Edgar. Present, teacher. All right, uh, Urban. Present teacher. Okay, great. Heidi. Present teacher. All right, Irene. Present teacher. Excellent, Ivan. Present teacher. All right, Jose, Jose Montes. Okay, Jose Ayala. Present teacher. All right, Josue. 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 No, nowhere around. Okay. All right. Uh, Juan Francisco. Hello, sir, teacher. Okay. Uh, are you Hello, there? Sir. Are you there? I, your camera, Juan Francisco. Uh, uh, I got it, but 
and you're driving. Okay, acuérdense, acuérdense que tenemos que uh, tener la cama encendida para, para la, la para la attendance, okay? Solo por eso le, le digo. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Juan Francisco. Ya le dimos su carita. Thank you. All right, uh, Jerry. Present teacher, que nos mande la foto de la esquela. <laughs> Estoy bromeando. <laughs> Qué malo. <laughs> Terrible, terrible. Okay, Luis. Present teacher. All right, uh, Natalia. Present teacher. All right, Ronald. Present teacher. Excellent, Wendy. Present. All right, uh, Warner. Present teacher. Okay, excellent, Yvonne. Present. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go back. Um, Jessica, I was doing something in my job. Uh, I'm here. Oh. Okay. Bosue. Present teacher. All right. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so let's go back to this um, topic. Okay, back. Ahora que ya entendimos que es un adverb clause, ahora vamos a, bueno, a ver si, bueno, vamos a, vamos a ver si realmente lo entendimos, ok? So, we are going to identify the adverb clause. It shouldn't be too difficult because, well, you'll see why it shouldn't be too difficult, but, ok. So, in the first sentence, which one is the adverb clause? In this one right here, which one is the adverb clause? After we conducted a SWOT analysis, we will know whether to go on or stop with the project. Which one is the adverb clause? After we. I guess the, after we conduct the SWOP analysis. analysis. Very good. After we conducted a SWOT analysis. Analysis. That part okay. here is an adverb clause. Why? Because first of all, it's dependent. We can't just simply say after we conducted a SWOT analysis then you're gonna end up with a question like, aha, uh -huh, what happened, right? So that's not a complete idea. That's the first reason. The second reason why this is an adverb clause is because it's giving me information about, um, about the, main, the main clause, or sorry, the main verb. And what is the main verb? The main verb mm -hmm. is, will know. Will know. Okay? So, in other words, we're saying, when will we know? When will we know? After, the answer after is... After we conduct the SWOT analysis. Exactly. After we conduct the SWOT analysis. So, um, this information here... This information here is giving me information about this act, action right there. Okay? Okay. All right. Good. Uh, bye. I'm going to give you another one over here in this sentence. Uh, before we make a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the company. Which part is the main, the, the sorry, the adverb clause? Before making a decision. Before we make a we decision, make a decision, right? This part here is the adverb clause. Why is it the adverb clause? Again, because this is not complete. I can't just simply say, before we make a decision. Mm -hmm. But I can say, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the, um, the company. We can say that. That's possible. OK? Are you with me? Does this make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So this we can say, right? We still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the company. That's okay, that's clear. There's no questions left, but I can't say just this before we make a decision because we're left with questions. Now, this part here, before we make a decision, what it's doing is it's giving me information about the verb. And what's the verb? Need to go over. 
this verb here, need to go over. Uh, what do we need to go, sorry, when do we need to go over it? Before we make a Before decision. Before we make a decision. Okay, so once again, as I said before, this part here, this out of applause, is giving me information about this action. Need to go over. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, in the last one over here in 3A, we have um, before the new product, pro the product project gets a green light, we will um, still need to beat the threats from outside. Which part is the, um, the adverb clause? Before the new project, product project gets a green light. Good. Before the new project, pro sorry, the, the new product. product, <laughs> product, <laughs> product <laughs> sorry. Okay. Before the new product project gets a green light. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. That part here is the adverb clause. Why? Because it's incomplete. We can't. Mm. That's, we can't just have a sentence like that. But we can say we still need to beat the threats from outside. That's possible. Mm. Okay. And the other reason is because it's giving me information about the main verb. And the main verb is need to be. Need to be. Okay. And this is giving me information about when we need to beat it. We need to, when do we need to beat the, the threats? We need to beat it before the new product, before the product new project gets a green light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Any questions at this moment? Okay, so we're getting closer, right? We're getting closer to understanding the adverb clause, right? Now it's clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Eh, chicos, acuérdense, necesitamos sus cameritas encendidas. Eh, eh, espero que todos estemos aquí porque sí es como una parte muy importante y sin la explicación y se le va a complicar. So I really, really need you guys here. Okay, so now that we understand what an adverb clause is, let's learn how to reduce it. Okay, we need to learn, we, we, okay, something you got to understand from English speakers is that we love to make things go down and short. We like mm -hmm. short and sweet. And short. Okay, so the shorter, the better. Okay, we like to contract things. We like to, you know, even like the pronunciation of some words, we just kind of mesh them together so that it's shorter. So we love to do this. Now, this, that means that out of our clauses, we can also make it shorter, okay? And how do we make it shorter? By reducing. How do we reduce? That's what we're gonna learn right now. So this first sentence, after we conduct the SWOT analysis, we will know whether to go on or stop with this project. This sentence can be reduced to this one. After conducting, sorry, just give me a moment. Okay. So after conducting a SWOT analysis, we will know whether to go on or stop this project. So we have reduced it. Okay. We have reduced it. Now, maybe we haven't reduced it in the amount, like how long it is but we've reduced it in the amount of words that are used, okay? So how do we reduce it? Well, there are three things that we need to consider. So I need a volunteer to help me read this part right here. What part teacher? This part right here, this blue, like light blue part. Ah, okay. Okay, uh, to reduce an adverb clause to a, phrase, to a phrase, do the following. 
Eliminate the subject in the adverb clause. If the clause has a form of the verb be, eliminate. If the clause has any other verb different from D, add B, I, N, G. Okay, very good. So I know, I know this looks very complicated, but this is actually the easiest part, okay? This is the easiest part. The hardest part, I think, was understanding what an adverb clause was. So now that we've understand, sorry, now that we've understood what an adverb clause is, let's understand how to reduce it, okay? Very simple. The first thing we gotta do is eliminate the subject from the adverb clause. We already mm -hmm. know what an adverb clause is. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do here is this. We're gonna take, for example, let's do this one right here. After we conduct the SWOT analysis, what is the, the subject? We. We, oui. oui. very good. Okay, so we're going to limit in we. Oui. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to mm. do. Now, that is the reason. Why. Esto. Okay, please be careful with this. We can only reduce the adverb clause if the subject is the same in the two clauses. Mm. If okay. Not, okay, I'll repeat that. We can only reduce the adverb uh, clause if the subject is the same in the two clauses. If they are different, we cannot reduce. So okay. if you notice here, it is different, right? One is, uh, so here we have we, and over here we have we. So it's the same, we can reduce, okay? Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, teacher. With me, yeah. Mm -hmm. like mathematics. Okay. Good. All right. Right. Second thing we're gonna do. If it has the if the if the clause contains the verb to be, we're just gonna eliminate it. Eliminate. Okay. Eliminate. I'll give you an example. Uh, because over here I think we don't have an example. Mm. No, we don't have an example. So I'm going to give you an example. So it's easier for you guys to see. Um, Okay. All right. So tell me which one is the adverb. Actually, vamos a cambiar el color para que no se confunda con esta explicación. Okay. So over here, which one is the main clause, the independent clause? Well, Independent he is he decided. got injured. He got injured. Good. Very good. Okay. So he got injured. That doesn't need more explanation. So it's independent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one is the, the adverb of clause? The adverb clause. While he was, While he was exercising. While he was exercising. Good. While he was exercising. Okay. Good. Why? Because it's incomplete. And second, because it gives us information about the action of getting injured, okay? Mm. Now, like I said, remember the first, to be able to reduce this, the first thing we gotta do is eliminate the subject, right? Um, in this case, the subject is? He. Exercise. He. The subject, the subject. He. Oh, the subject is he. Right, he. good. And because he is the same in both, Mm -hmm. we can reduce okay mm -hmm. if it's if it said while he was exercising she got injured then we wouldn't be able to no. reduce because we're ha we have two different people okay mm -hmm. so here we can reduce because he is the same mm -hmm. now if we have a verb to be we eliminate it 
do we have a verb to be? We have to eliminate it was. Exactly, we have a verb to be and the verb to be is was. So we're going to eliminate this. And we end up saying, while exercising, he got injured. That's it. You reduce the adverb clause. To complete with the last one, if the clause has any other very different, if maybe is while well, he was or oh, he exercised and he got injured, we have to add the ing at the end of, yeah, of the exactly. verb, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But right now, um, we're going to just stick with this. I, I want you to see how easy it is if we to eliminate the subject and to eliminate the verb to be, and that's it. We don't do anything else, that's it. So the, the sentence would end up being, while exercising, he got injured, okay? And I'll just write it down just to make sure that you guys understood this. While exercising, he got injured. So that is going to be the sentence, the final sentence that we have reduced. Okay? Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that? Is that difficult? Mm, now I understand right. a lot of things in my job. <laughs> right? But the, the teacher, but the, uh, the both examples, it's correct. Right. Or no, only in yes. the second one. No, it's correct. So you, no, that you're right. sure that the, 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 maybe the principal, uh, 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 the principal de esto is that you short the sentence. Yeah. It's the same thing like when you say, um, I do not work. And then we show you that you can say, I don't work. Both sentences are correct. I do not work and I don't work. They're both correct. It's just that as native speakers, like I said before, we love to contract things. So you will hear many people contracting things like adverb clauses. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is this pretty clear for everybody? Mm -hmm. You're following me? Yes, teacher. It's complicated at the first one, but um, with your explanation, with your explanation, it's so clear. Yeah, I told you it looks complicated, but it's really easy. Okay, the hardest part is just understanding what an adverb clause is. Once you understand what an adverb clause is, reducing it is piece of cake, okay? All right, like they say in Spanish, pan comido. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so that's when we use uh, the verb to be, but there's still one more example, or better said, one more rule. And the rule is if the clause has another verb, um, sorry, sorry, if the clause has of any other verb different from B, add ing. Okay, so any other verb that exists that is not the verb to be, we're going to add ing, like this one right here. Okay, before we make a decision, okay, how do we reduce this? Well, the first step is identify what the we. subject the subject is we, we exactly. have to eliminate we exactly we're going to eliminate we and we can eliminate we because uh the subject is also we over here so it's okay the second thing we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the verb to be ah but there is no verb to be mm -hmm. here so in that case we're going to go to the third rule and the third rule says that i have to add a nine ing to the verb so what I'm going to do is instead of uh, writing make, I'm going to say, what's the ing form of make? Making. Making, and there you go. We end up with, before making a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the company. So do you see that? 
Mm -hmm. We have added the ing to the make. Okay? Yes. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Next, number three, let's look at this one. Before, before the new product, sorry, the pre, yes. <laughs> the product project. <laughs> okay, before the new product project gets a green light, we still need to beat the threats from outside. Okay, let's try to reduce this one. First thing we gotta do is, says eliminate the subject. Okay, what's the subject? The new product, but in that case is it, Ah, good. Okay, so the new in the subject is the new product project. Mm -hmm. Can we eliminate it? No. 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 Why? Because it's because not the same. Like it's the not the same subject. Exactly. Because the subject is we in this one, and the mm -hmm. product project in this one. So they're different subjects. And because mm -hmm. they're different subjects, we can't go further. We can't reduce. Mm -hmm. So this one is only possible to make it in the full form. Okay. okay? That's why there's an X here. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why there's an X because it's not possible to reduce. We can't say before getting a green light, we still need to be the threads from outside. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Ya ven que está fácil. Hoy sí, ¿verdad? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Good. See, it's not complicated at all. You just have to be able to identify what an adverb clause is. That's it. They eat everything is woo. Makes sense. I yeah. I saw a lot of I saw a lot of uh, adverb clause of time in my job in in different paperwork, communications, emails, etc. And yeah. now I know why it makes sense. Yeah. And you're right. Uh, um, American people likes to reduce and make things short. It's just Latin America, we explain everything. Yeah, uh, this is a cultural thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely a cultural thing because uh, you will notice that, um, yes, um, Latinos, we love to um, explain, explain, and uh, you know, flourish, and you know, all this thing, and even flourish. Even <laughs> the, the language, the language itself, is very rich. There, you think about it in Spanish. There are so many words for the same, um, the the same object, for example, mm -hmm. or adjectives. We have so many adjectives in Spanish, right? Just think about, for, I just, I'm just at the top of my mind. I, I remember, um, you know, at, at my job, at my other job, um, the, 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 um, the doctor, she was learning Spanish, right? So she knew a little bit of Spanish. And when I asked the, the lady about being allergic to things, I asked her, um, she said, are you allergic to peanuts? Mm -hmm. And I said, um, tiene alergias al maní? And then mm -hmm. the lady, she said, well, wait a sec. I, I, I heard you asked her um, about maní. Isn't it cac cacahuate? And I <laughs> said, yes, it is. But, you know, it's the same word for the same product, right? The same mm -hmm. object, right? So just mm -hmm. think about that. You know, even just for the same, the same fruit or, or, or not, mm -hmm. we use many words, mm -hmm. right? So that is, that, is, that is Spanish. We like to add things. But in English, it's just mm -hmm. the opposite. We like to go straight to the point. The shorter, the better. The shorter, the better, the sweeter, mm -hmm. we say, right? Short and sweet. That's actually mm -hmm. an expression, short and sweet. Short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, short and sweet. Okay, 
So that's something you got to know. Um, in the American, the American and the British culture and Canadian culture, we like to go straight to the point. So don't we don't we don't like to beat around the bush. Have you guys ever heard of the expression? Beat around the bush. I'll write it in the chat. That's a very good expression. Beat around the bush. Beat around the bush. Do you guys know what that means? Beat around the bush. That's sobre la rama. ¿Cómo? Como no irse por las ramas. No irse por las ramas. No. Mm. Como ir al grano. No, be, no beat, beat around the bush is the opposite. It's como dar la vuelta. Mm -hmm. y, uh, ah, ah. Y entonces después me termino ah, esa parte de algo. Entonces, ah. ¿Ah? La técnica de la mosca. <laughs> es que para vender, it happens yeah. to me, you know, because I assist customers in Spanish and customers in English. Right. When I'm assisting a Latin American customer, even though they live in US or Canada, Right. I need to explain that you know this is for here, this will help you with this. Ta -ra -ra, ta -ra -ra. My conversation, it lasts a minimum of uh, half an hour or 40 minutes with a Latin American customer. Right. When I'm speaking with uh, a, an American customer, okay, the price is this, we'll help you for this, this, and this. My conversation is like 10, 15 minutes, and immediately we say, we'll tell you, okay, I will purchase it, okay, just send me the. Right. Information, ta -da -da. Right. It's yeah. so simple. Right. Exactly. So this is a cultural thing. And mm -hmm. that's why it's important that you guys understand this, because even though it's not incorrect to say this complete sentence, but you will hear. I feel bad things. at the beginning <laughs> because you think something is missing because you're thinking Spanish. No, I need to explain better. No, they just right. want to hear if. This yeah. is red, this is black, yeah. yes yeah. or not. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's the opposite of, of the straight to the point. No, you must everything. go to the straight to the point. You, you mean no, beat it's around the opposite. Bush. Beat around the bush. Yes, uh -huh. it's, the opposite. yes. it's the opposite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything is clear about this PowerPoint, right? About this slide. Mm -hmm. Right? Or do you need some more explanation? Okay, but the moment of truth. We're going to get you guys to work in pairs. Oh, wait a sec, sorry, I forgot to share. Okay, uh, you're gonna be doing these exercises. So it says here, uh, read the statement below, reduce the adverb clauses to adverb phrases when possible. Notice it says when possible. That means that not all of them are going to be possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to get you guys to work and I'm going to get, give you the same group. Okay. So I'm going to open the breakout rooms and um, you shouldn't take you very long. This is going to take, take you like five minutes. I promise you it won't thank you very much time so i'm gonna give you five minutes to do this okay all right here we go let's open the rooms I don't have groups. Yes, you do. Um, me parece que está en el grupo cuatro. Okay, va. Lo vamos a hacer una cosa. Le voy a lo voy a asignar a un grupo, pero no va a aceptar esa. Oh. Okay. Gracias. 
Very much, uh, after, after finishing brainstorming after is finish. essential to discard finish. ideas that are not this. I don't know the pronunciation of that word. The last word, we the the asible, no sé cómo se pronuncia. Okay, number two, before the manager listed the weakness of the company on the slide, he had presented new product to help the company increase sales. Okay, uh, okay. number two, before. have the same the same yes. subject, okay? The manager and he. Developing. After. After. Hey, Heidi, what do you think? We are our hope right now. I'm, I'm still thinking. For me, the subject, the subject is the same, or oh, uh, we can change. This is the depending clause, right? This one. Okay, then the second one. Before the manager listed the weaknesses, weaknesses or weaknesses, how is how do you pronounce it, teacher? Weaknesses, weaknesses, weaknesses. Weaknesses. Oh, I'm sorry. After okay, before the manager listed the weaknesses yes. of weaknesses. the company, weaknesses of the company on Weakness. a slide. Uh -huh. He had presented new products to help the company increase sales. In this case, we're talking about the same subject, right? The manager, he. Ronald, what do you think? So what do you think? You can reduce? Yes, for me, for me I, for, I think we can because here we're talking about the manager and here we continue talking about him. It's the same person. So reducing this, it will be uh, uh, listening. <laughs> no, listed, ING form. ING form list before listing the weaknesses of the company on a slide. Uh, we can use the manager here, or we need to leave it he teacher in the second one. Before right. listing, for example, in this one, before if we switch it. It will be, if we reduce it, I'm sorry, before listing the weaknesses of the company on a slide, can we say the manager instead of he, ah, okay. Yes, in ah. fact, we would have to say the manager because otherwise ah. we uh, lose, oh, no. yeah, we lose um, the subject, really, we don't understand. Who ah, it is. okay, okay, so we can, okay. The manager presented the new products, to help the company increase sales. Okay. Uh, we, we put an example, for example, uh, uh, while keeping Hi. test message. Uh, hello, teacher. We have a question. Okay. With the second, the bear is in pass. Um, I don't have a mistake. I have a mistake. Decide. We have to put the I and G. Do we have the verb to be? Uh, yeah, because it's a past sentence. And we have a doubt about that. If you can, if we can use 
and, and add the ING. For example, before the manager listening the weakness, we can put before listening the weakness of the company. List, listing, yes, listing. Ah, listing. okay, okay, okay. It's not, it's, it, uh, in any case, it may be a, a past sentence, a future sentence, always we can do at the, if the verb is different from B, add the ing. It's not important. It doesn't matter that, that the sentence is a past or future. No, as long as it doesn't change the meaning. Okay. 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 Four. Okay, for the third one, Andrew kept text messaging while he was in a video conference about the prototype from the new product. In, the, mm. in this case, it doesn't have a clause of time. But we have we, while mm, messaging, while, while keeping, mm -hmm. while keeping, 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 uh, keeping. keeping. While keeping test messaging. Keep it in messages. Okay. And the fourth one is many promising products, products, ideas I rule up after they fail to produce positive results in the thought analysis. Analysis. After. After promising. Any promising. But after, I don't know if, if after, because in the Okay, you guys finished? Uh, no, teacher. No? <laughs> no. no. Okay. We are in the fourth, in the four set of statements. Okay. Many promising products. Idea I rule. Uh, before promising products, ideas I run on. I don't know, guys. You have an idea with what kind of clause of time we can put in this word, in this sentence? No, I don't. No. Why promise the clause idea? Yeah, but I don't know it's possible, but, but you are talking pro ideas. It's a object. Yes, this is, that is uh, the object, that is the, the element that we are talking about in that sentence. A rule of 30. Maybe before promising product ideas. No. No, before. No, I don't know. Product ideas maybe can be. Exactly. Yeah, teacher. We call it with a mind. Hi. 
Okay, okay teacher. Uh, we have a lot of stuff of this. Okay. And because the first one is as after the product development team finished the brainstorming, it is essential to this part ideas that are not visible. So in this case, uh, I guess that we cannot uh, eliminate, uh, we don't have this, the, okay. The subject is the pro development, the development team. Wait, the, the, the very class. Are we number four or five? No, the, the number one. one, the number one. The, the very close is after the product development team finishes the brainstorm. brainstorming. That's the very close, right? No. The... Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. You say no. <laughs> <laughs> I am shocking. What is, what is yeah. it? Okay, the bird. Mm -hmm. The bird is finished. What is the, the question? Your question is what? Okay, my question is that in the number one, we cannot eliminate uh, the subject. Why? Because uh, we don't have any, any um, we have a subject, but it's the product development team, right? Uh huh. And the other sentence, we have it. Right. So we, we cannot eliminate the, the subject, right? Exactly. Then, then uh, we don't have a verb to be. So we go to the third rule that is, let me one second, is if the clause has any other verb different from the, uh, I and G. So in the, in this case, we have other verb that is finished. But I'm not sure if we have to change the finish like I and G. After the product, after the product development is finishing. Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. The rules go one after the other for uh, with the purpose because <laughs> if you can't do the first one you can't do the second one either oh okay 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 so you can if you, can't, if you don't if you have um if we can't eliminate the subject because we have different subjects we can't mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. so we can't okay. we have to leave it like that Okay, okay, teacher. I um, really appreciate that explanation. Okay. Yes. Right. Any other questions? No, teacher. Um, I guess that is the same for the other uh, sentence. So, uh, we point of view in this exercise mm -hmm. is that we only can reduce the number six. Is that okay, or we are we are making a mistake? I don't know. We'll we'll discuss it together later. Ah, okay, teacher. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so you guys are finished. Yes, teacher. Yeah. I guess I guess that we almost finished because we uh, were talking about the last uh, sentence. That's it. Okay. Okay, so. All right, so I'll see you guys in the main room. Okay, teacher. Okay, guys, so. Listen. <laughs>
yo voy antes que vos, así que yo tendría que... <risa> no, es que al inicio no dije, entonces me acabo de acordar. Por eso. Ah, es que al inicio que quede, no estabas. <risa> para que quede el recording ahí. Ah, sí, ¿cómo no? No te oímos, Maico. <risa> Okay, guys, so um, it's time. Uh, we've come to our, the end of our class. Are you guys finished? No. No. No, no teacher. Uh, we guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We went over the third one. All right. It's not easy as you explain, teacher. <laughs> okay, let me, let me clarify something very important. The rules are in order, mm -hmm. so uh -huh. you have to follow the rules. If you can't do number one, if number one is not possible, you can't do number two, you can't ah, do number three. Okay, okay, great, okay. good to know. Okay. All right, so we're so bad on with the us, number three. <laughs> Why? Because you tell us that information until that we've almost finished the yes, thing. Yes, yes. I told you guys before. Oh, you didn't say nothing, my love. Okay, teacher. I told you, you can only reduce it if the ver the subject are the same. If the subjects are different, we cannot reduce. I told you guys that. Okay, so it's different when you say yeah. if the rule number one you can <laughs> make it. Into and you try to do the, 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 the rule number two. <laughs> exactly. No. No. That is the. Uh, it's the richness of our language. But thank you, teacher. No, we really appreciate that information. I just want to be clear. I'll repeat. You, if if you can't, if you can't. Re reduce or better said if you can't eliminate the subject because mm -hmm. they are different subjects that means you can't reduce the, su the the clause and if you can't reduce the clause don't do x don't do number two do number don't do number three because number two and number three are for reducing we okay. were stuck in the number three because the rule number one it, it, it was uh, it, it was it it has the same subject, but we were stuck in the usage of the verb to be. We couldn't eliminate it. We were stuck in that, that one, the number three. All right. But I guess so we are now, going to look, take a look tomorrow. Yeah. So now that you guys understand this a little better, do for homework. We'll check it tomorrow. Okay? So la tarea que les queda. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> Tomorrow, Oiga, check. No, pobrecito. <laughs> Tomorrow check well, teacher. Yes. Um, Ana Claudia. Present teacher. Andres. Present teacher. Claudia. Present. Eh, Edgar. Present teacher. Urban. Present teacher. Heidi. Present teacher. Irene. Present teacher. Ivan. Present teacher. Jose. Uh, Jose Montes, Jose Ayala, present teacher, Josué, present teacher, Juan Francisco, present teacher, Jerry, present teacher, Luis, present teacher, Natalia, present teacher, Ronald, present teacher, Wendy, present. Werner. Present teacher. And Yvonne. Present. Wonderful. All right, guys. Uh, today I'm just going to stay with Edgar. Okay. Le toca a Edgar for the one-on-one -on -one session. And that's it, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to do the homework so we can check it tomorrow at the beginning of the class. Okay. Okay, thank Bye. you. Good night. Okay, Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 I guess that today is the last day Good that night. you review the, the module, right? No? Please, no, and pray for that. No, moment. no, we still have tomorrow. So we have to do mañana. Okay. 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 See you, teacher. Have a night. See you. Have a night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Anoa. <laughs> okay, Edgar, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estamos? Bien, 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 teacher, ahí.
dándole ganas igual. Eso. Dándole ganas. Ok, muy bien. Eh, what can I help you with? What questions do you have? Um, the, the, the class today, um, uh, clean, clean, clean the, 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 the... It's clear. Yeah. 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 Sure? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, en las, en las oraciones, en la, en la número tres y la cinco, y teníamos duda de cómo, si es que se podía, bueno, aunque usted dijo, hay horas, hay frases o párrafos que sí se podía eh, acortar, ¿verdad? Sure. Pero no necesariamente. Eh, eliminando el subject, eliminando el subject. Mm -hmm. De eso solamente eh, tres, dos, perdón, dos, no, no, no consideramos que no, no los podíamos eliminar. Ajá. Pero okay. ahí sí nos quedamos con la duda. Ajá. Vale. Si, si, el, el, si el sujeto, si el, ajá, si el pronombre no es el mismo, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. eh, entonces no se puede reducir. Y entonces hay que dejar la, la, la oración tal cual. ¿Ok? No mm. se hace absolutamente nada. Porque no se puede reducir. Sí. ¿Verdad? ¿Ok? Pero si, si se puede reducir, entonces lo primero que hacemos es eliminamos el, el pronombre, ¿verdad? El pronombre. El pronombre. Pronom Ajá. Y después procedemos a ver si hay un verbo pi. ¿Verdad? Si hay el verbo pi, en, si fuera en el, en el presente, el pasado, el futuro, lo vamos a eliminar. ¿Verdad? Okay. Y ya, después, ya. después vemos, ok, si no hay un verbo to be, entonces, ¿cuál es el verbo? Entonces, el, ya cuando identificamos el verbo, que no es el verbo to be, entonces cambiamos ese verbo a el ing form. ¿El ing? Correcto. Ok. Ya. Ya, Ficha. ¿Alguna preguntita sobre eso? No, Ficha. ¿No? ¿Está claro? No, no, no. Está claro. ¿Está Ya. ¿Sí? Clear. Yeah. Clear. Okay. Good. Uh, ¿Qué otra pregunta tiene? Um, de momento, en cuanto a los temas que hemos estado viendo, eh, pues los he entendido. Sí, uh -huh. como en el anterior módulo, la parte de la práctica a la hora de hablar es lo que me, me, me hace falta, más sin embargo, sé que poco a poco me voy a ir soltando un poquito más y, y voy a lograr tener ese, ese, ese mismo nivel, ¿verdad? Sí. Es el que el, el resto del equipo tiene. No, uh, y estoy, yo creo... Estoy, estoy, Ajá. ¿sí? Sí, sí, dígame. Dígame. Continúa, continúe. Estoy, estoy tratando de escuchar música en inglés titulada para entenderla, le, irla viendo cómo la pronuncia y eso para ir entrando en más, en más ambiente, ¿verdad? Okay. Y, y tener la soltura. ¿sí? Ok, muy bien, muy bien, excelente. Es, sí, y ahora la pregunta es, ¿cómo siente que va evolucionando? Bueno. En realidad, si, si voy eh, de nuevo a la misma velocidad que el resto del, del equipo, en cuanto a, a la, al entendimiento a la hora de, de conversar, así como lo hacemos en, en español. Vale, pero quiero, es no lo... quiero que se me, me, me compare con otros. Quiero que usted se compare consigo mismo. ¿Cómo siente mm. que se va evolucionando? ¿Cómo qué prove, progreso va haciendo? Sí, pues considero que llevo un buen, un buen ritmo de mí, ¿verdad? Aunque quisiera alcanzar y llegar un poquito más, más rápido. Es quizá básicamente mi, mi ansiedad, es una ansiedad o un deseo, más allá de la ansiedad, es el deseo de entrar en el mismo ritmo. Cuando usted habla, a veces habla rápido y a veces habla un poco más, más lento. Cuando habla un poco más lento, le entiendo más rápido, pero cuando habla rápido y me quedo corto y, y, y trato de, de, de comprender, okay. hablando entre usted, entre usted y yo. Ok. Vale. Cuando eso pasa, cuando, ese, cuando eso pase, Edgar, dígame si hay algo que, que, 
que no entendió porque lo dije muy rápido. Dígame. Diga, teacher, can you repeat that? O sea, no hay nada de malo que me lo diga. Lo, eh, va, es, va a ser natural de que yo voy a cambiar los, um, el paso, ¿verdad? De, del, del habla por dos razones. Uno, porque hay momentos en que cuando estoy explicando algo eh, y quiero asegurarme que sí lo entienda, entonces yo lo bajo la velocidad, ¿verdad? Conscientemente uh -huh. para poder as asegurarme que lo, lo entienda. Perfecto. Ahora, lo otro es que va a ser natural que lo voy a cambiar porque, eh, bueno, para empezar es, es mi primer idioma, ¿verdad? Entonces, usted sabe, en un, en, cuando es su lengua materna o el primer idioma, eh, pues la, lo, lo que naturalmente el, la mente hace es va al paso que, que está pensando, ¿verdad? Ya, eso, sí. eso es el, el, lo natural, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, hay momentos en que sí, me voy a disparar, por así decirlo, ¿verdad? Y voy a hablar un poco más, más rápido. Pero ahí Ajá. es donde, donde usted simplemente dice, teacher, can you repeat that? Can you slow down? Y yo lo voy a hacer sin ningún problema. No tengo ningún inconveniente en repetirlo. Es, eso es lo, o sea, para eso estoy aquí, para, para ayudarles, okay. pero no para, o sea, para hacerles la vida más fácil, no más difícil, ¿ok? Entonces, okay. Okay. entonces usted no tenga pena y diga, teacher, can you repeat that? Re pregúnteme muchas veces, no hay problema. Es como, vale, le voy a poner un ejemplo, le voy a poner un ejemplo. Eh, bueno, ustedes ya, ya les he hablado, comentado de que uh, durante el día, pues, uh, trabajo como intérprete médico, ¿verdad? Creo que ya, ya saben eso. Entonces, a veces, ¿qué pasa? Ten, a veces, o sea, yo estoy tomando notas, pero no siempre les entiendo lo que dicen. A veces porque hablé muy rápido, a veces porque no articulan bien, la verdad, ya sea el, el médico o, o, o el paciente. A veces porque hay ruidos en el ambiente, ¿verdad? Y no lo no logro escuchar bien lo que dicen, a veces porque están hablando muy suave, a veces porque, um, porque mi conexión no está buena y no se oye bien, un simple uh -huh. cosa que puede pasar. Entonces, ¿qué hago yo? Tengo que literalmente preguntar, excuse me, could you repeat that, please? Y se lo digo al paciente, se lo digo al médico independiente, se lo voy a decir, porque tengo que para saber qué dijeron para poder interpretarlo. No me voy a inventar ¿verdad? las cosas. Entonces, ya. tengo que hacerlo. Tengo, y, no, y no puedo tener pena de preguntar ¿verdad? para una repetición. Porque ese es mi trabajo. Tengo que hacerlo. Entonces, igual acá, su trabajo es de alumno. Y como alumno, usted tiene que pedir repeticiones si no entiende algo. Ok. Ok. Ya. Porque ese, es, porque ese es su trabajo, tiene que entender la información, ¿ok? Así que usted pierde la pena de estar, de, de decir, ay, no, pero imagínese, ay, ¿qué me va a decir de mí? Imagínese que yo dijera eso, ¿qué va a decir el médico si yo le pido una interpretación o una repetición o el paciente? Entonces, voy, voy a, tal vez voy a tener pena, pero ¿qué voy a pasar? Le voy a dar, dar información incorrecta. ¿verdad? Porque me voy a inventar lo que, lo que yo, yo pienso, lo que yo quiere, creo, y que va a estar súper mal. Man. Imagínense, le estoy dando una receta diferente, tómese tal cosa. Yeah. Y estoy, imagínense, o sea, hasta le, hasta no. le puedo provocar a saber qué cosa. ¿verdad? Entonces, sí. eh, eh, le di la importancia. Ahora, obviamente, esto no va a ser de vida o muerte, pero sí, en el caso suyo, es una oportunidad desperdiciada. Si usted no, no, no aclara y pregunta y todo, está desaprovechando esa oportunidad. Ok. okay. Voy a ser uh, okay. más persistente y voy a... Can you repeat that? Ok. Excellent. Ok. ¿Alguna okay. otra pregunta okay. o inquietud, Edgar? No. Ok. All right. So that will be all. Take care and see you tomorrow. Ok, teacher. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.